John Wick Chapter 4 is a film about revenge and death topped off with a tale of redemption and change. With a rich world of hitmen, assassins, and death dealers, criminals play a major part in just about every second of each film. And thanks to the way this world works, they never see the inside of a cell. But what if they did? I'm Kyle with Cinema Sentencing, and today we're sentencing John Wick villains for their crimes. Court is in session. Real quick, the rules. We'll be going through all four John Wick films and sentencing the villains for their crimes. And just to be clear, we'll be doing this as if each villain survived to face a jury. It's also worth pointing out that given the nature of the series, there are a lot of capital offenses. And lastly, before we start, consider this a spoiler warning for the series. With that said, let's get to our first docket. That docket being made up of villains from the first John Wick film. The very first villain we'll be prosecuting today is Miss Perkins. Miss Perkins is an assassin hired by Vigo to hunt down John Wick during the events of the first film. She makes her presence known almost immediately by threatening to break the rules of the Continental Hotels, which while not in and of itself a crime, certainly leads to crimes. She's a contract killer and as such, would be on the line for attempted murder for when she was hired to go after John Wick. After being defeated by John, she escapes her imprisonment and then proceeds to kill Harry, which adds a non-contract murder to a rap sheet. We're starting off strong with capital offenses, so her sentence is execution via firing squad. Moving on to the second criminal we have, Avi. Avi works as the counselor and sort of second in command for the Tarasov Mafia. Due to being so high up in the company's chain of command, he'd definitely be on the line for organized crime, as well as aiding and abetting for most of Vigo's crimes. He's responsible for rounding up all of Vigo's army to hunt down Wick, and is partially responsible for the hiring of hitmen, like Miss Perkins, which is solicitation of murder for hire. After the death of Yosef and others, he grabs a gun and tries to kill Wick, only to be slaughtered by him subsequently by his own boss, though he is acting in self-defense at this point. Throughout the film, he acts as a sort of secondary puppet master, hiring others to do the dirty work while he hides and counts money. And for all these crimes, he would be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Moving on to the man who kick-started the film, Yosef Tarasov. Yosef is the son of mob boss Vigo Tarasov, and it's completely due to him that the events of the whole film kicked off. His petty criminal actions of breaking and entering into John's home, as well as committing acts of assault and battery, grand theft auto, and of course, killing John's dog Daisy. That's at least four criminal actions right out of the gate, all because John didn't want to sell him his car. He threatens John, attempts to murder him, and is then ultimately killed. Yosef is a coward who abuses his power and hides behind the power of his dad's organization. His crimes are especially heinous, and his sentence would be 30 years in prison without the possibility of parole. As much as it would be nice to give this guy the death penalty, he isn't exactly responsible for the most organized crime and instead is just a nitwit son of a guy in charge. And frankly, he would absolutely hate doing time in prison. The final criminal on our docket for the first film is the main villain, Vigo. Vigo is a crime lord and the father of Yosef, who is very well aware of John Wick and his abilities. We called him Baba Yaga. He uses his station as a mob boss for running an organized crime unit and has apparently been doing it for quite a while. Once he realizes what his son did, he beats the hell out of him, which is assault. Granted, everyone agrees he deserved it. But beyond that, Vigo hires hitmen, attempts to murder John on multiple occasions, and even commits acts of torture when those hitmen fail. Vigo doesn't seem to care at all for anyone under him and mostly wants to keep himself alive. His other major crime on the list is money laundering, as he keeps a ton of money in a warehouse that is quickly destroyed by John Wick. So Vigo's punishment is simple. He would be left to rot in prison for a full life sentence without the possibility of parole. Continuing the story by telling us about the past and the present, next we have John Wick Chapter 2. The first villain we'll be prosecuting on this docket is Ares. She is a mute woman who works as a bodyguard for Santino D'Antonio. Within moments of being introduced and checking on John and Santino, she gropes John during the pat-down. But after that, she attempts to murder John with a variety of soldiers on more than one occasion. John does eventually kill her, and despite her multiple attempts on his life, she doesn't do much else. 
but given the attempted murders, she'll be stuck behind bars for 20 years with a chance at parole. The other bodyguard on this docket is Cassian. He's an old friend and confidant of John's and the personal bodyguard of Gianna D'Antonio. When he crosses paths with John, he realizes what was going on and quickly attempts to murder him. He commits acts of assault and battery when he gets into a brutal fistfight with Wick across the streets of Rome. Then you have the property damage when he and John go through a window of the Continental in Rome. Then there's the attempted contract killing when John's bounty is increased. An eye for an eye, John. He's willing to die for his ward and his punishment fits that. Execution via firing squad would be more than enough. The final criminal on our sequel docket is Santino D'Antonio. Santino is the main antagonist of the second film, where he tries to cash in a favor that John owed him. And when John denies, he immediately commits destruction of property by firing multiple grenades into his home. He uses John's favor to abuse his power and force himself into his sister's position, essentially blackmailing Wick throughout the film. He then betrays Wick by sending Ares after him after he completed his mission. He runs his organized crime syndicate with an iron fist, setting a massive bounty on John's head to inspire dozens of contract killings. Even after usurping his sister's spot, he tries to avoid dying by hiding in a continental hotel run by Winston. Santino is a slimy person who by all accounts deserves his death, and as such, if he were to stand trial, his punishment would be a public execution via hanging. When John has to face down the high table itself, we need to prosecute them. This docket is John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. Starting out, we have Winston Scott. Winston is a recurring and major character throughout all four films, working mostly as an ally to John. Winston, like most villains in the series, plays a major role in organized crime, specifically in New York. He acts as a villain in the third film, very famously committing attempted murder when he shoots John Wick off of a building. However, he still acts as an ally as he gives John his guns as well as other stuff, which is breaking high table rules, but not necessarily laws, save for potentially gun running. Winston makes up for his acts in the fourth film and his punishment reflects this, as we're sentencing him to 15 years in prison and a fine of 10 golden coins. Next we have Zero. Zero is an assassin that is hired by the adjudicator and the high table to hunt down and kill John Wick. This is of course contract killing, which we've already talked about plenty on this list. Zero hunts down the Ruska Roma and essentially tortures John Wick's adopted mother, the director, for helping him escape. He commits acts of mass murder on anyone who helped John, including multiple homeless people under the arm of the Bowery King. He gives King a cut for every bullet that he gifted to John, which unlike what the director would be considered assault, as he didn't seem to want this. Zero hunts down and attempts to murder John on multiple occasions and leads an army of assassins to do his bidding, but he doesn't manage to win in the end, and if he were to stand trial, we would not be lenient. Zero's sentence would be a public execution via firing squad. From master to students, up next are the Shinobi twins. The Shinobi are a pair of Zero students and great warriors and assassins in their own right. They mostly act on Zero and the Adjudicator's orders, where they commit multiple murders in both the Ruska Roma and the Bowery King assaults. They then attempt to murder John Wick himself on more than one occasion. However, they act as honorable warriors, and while they assault with an attempt to kill John, they let him up with every time he is knocked down, hoping to get a true fight with him. Though they do have multiple murders under their belt, so the punishment does have to be severe. They're receiving a life sentence, but with a chance at parole. Rounding out the third movie's docket, we have the Adjudicator. The Adjudicator is the main antagonist, sent by the high table just to deal with John as well as Winston. She acts as a warrior and puppet master as she orders around Zero and the Shinobi with ease. The Adjudicator tries to both blackmail and force Winston out of his position as manager after the events of the second film, and while she does threaten him, this is all under the orders of the high table. She then threatens to do the same with the Bowery and after plenty of failure, hires Zero and the Shinobi to hunt down and kill John. Beyond this, the Adjudicator doesn't do much, mostly working as a puppet master that doesn't actively attack or fight. Her punishment would be life in prison without parole. Finally, we get to our last docket, the most recent movie on the list, John Wick Chapter 4. The Chapter 4 docket starts out with Kane. Kane is a blind assassin and an old accomplice of John Wick. He's a hired killer who has apparently worked as a contract killer for many years, killing anyone that the high table deems necessary. 
This leads him to being hired by Marquez de Gramont to kill John Wick. He goes to Osaka and threatens Koji Shimuza, steals ramen from the man and then kills dozens of his men within moments of each other. His body count hits the dozens, and even if you discount the men that were in self-defense, Kane still has at least a dozen murders under his belt. He then ends up helping John to the top of the staircase for their duel, and Kane then inadvertently commits manslaughter when he kills Wick. Now, most of his crimes he did were under coercion, and if this is used in court, he may get off easier. But even if his crimes were downgraded, he'd still be behind bars for the rest of his life, with only a very minor chance at parole. Next we have Chidi, an assassin and bodyguard who works for Marquez Vincent de Gramont. He takes his position quite seriously and spends most of the film following his orders to a T. He goes to the Osaka Continental, helps commit destruction of property and many murders, all within moments of being introduced. He spends most of the movie killing people that get in his way and works as a contract killer once John's bounty hits exceedingly high numbers. However, what really sets him apart from the dozens of form-fitting assassins in the series was when he kicked and abused Tracker's dog and then threatened to kill him. He does get his comeuppance, but in the courts, his punishment would be the same. Execution via firing squad. But real quick before we get to our last entry, if you're enjoying this video and you want to do us a huge favor, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. We ask because we'd really appreciate the help in getting to our next milestone and we have a ton more content in the works that we can't wait to share with you. The final villain on our docket is the Marquez Vincent de Gramont, the head of the high table and the main antagonist of the fourth movie. After the events of the third film, he's promoted to the top of the high table's food chain. He's responsible for the destruction of the New York Continental, the murder of Sharon, as well as the death of John Wick's uncle. He then hires Kane and others for a variety of contract killings, specifically on John Wick. He threatens Kane's daughter, as well as blackmails to inspire Kane to take the job. He assaults Mr. Nobody by stabbing him through the hand to prove he was worthy of being paid by him and he abuses his power at almost every opportunity, so it's no surprise he's one of the more dastardly villains we have to prosecute. So his sentence is to be paraded in front of a massive crowd and executed publicly via guillotine. A fitting end for him. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our sentencing, and tell us what movies we should cover next. And if you need a little more cinema justice in your life, make sure to hit that notification bell and binge our other videos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.